SCP-786 Funnel Factor 12 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-786 is not autonomous and its peculiar properties appear to be both safe and predictable. It is to be kept in a secure storage room at Site-19 with standard surveillance precautions in place. However, it is important that the room whom is to be kept secure against vermin of any sort. The room must be sealed to prevent entry by insects, rodents, and other small creatures, and fumigated on a bi-monthly basis. Description: SCP-786 is a large funnel composed of high-density polymers. Its appearance matches a conventional kitchen funnel and the symbols 8 ounces are embossed on the outside just under the rim of the large end. But the funnel has an internal diameter of 1.14 meters across its wide end and 9.5 centimeters across its narrow end. Its internal volume is 408.8 liters, which is approximately 1,730 times larger than its professed 8 ounce capacity, or a factor of 12 cubed. One a, vi a simple visual inspection of SCP-786 interior immediately suggests its unusual properties. When viewed from either end of the funnel, the interior of SCP-786 appears to be perfectly cylindrical, with the far end of the funnel having the exact same diameter as the near end, whether that be end be the larger end or the smaller one. The view through the far end's opening is enlarged or reduced accordingly. Any object that passes through SCP-786 will have its physical dimensions changed by a factor of 12, either increasing or decreasing, depending on which direction the object passes through the funnel. This change is permanent unless the object comes back through the funnel in the opposite direction. It is theorized that space is somehow becomes pinched through the throat of this item, causing items to appear larger or smaller without actually changing their effective size. This allows for living organisms to pass through SCP-786 to survive without apparent harm in their reduced or enlarged state. This includes human test subjects who exhibit no adverse health effects and have no detectable degradation of mental capacity despite the significant reduction in brain size. The object itself appears to have been increased in size by a factor of 12, but it is not known how this occurred. There does not seem to be any way for the funnel to pass through itself. Due to size constraints of the large and small ends, nothing larger than 1.14 meters in diameter can be reduced using SCP-786, and nothing larger than 9.5 centimeters in diameter can be enlarged. It is not recommended that objects be passed through SCP-786 in the same direction more than once, especially not living objects, as this has resulted in redacted. SCP-786 was discovered in the basement level of a parking structure that has been closed when the retail mall it served had gone out of business four months prior. A careful sweep of the structure uncovered the crushed remains of a Honda 1989 CB1 CB400F motorcycle that had been miniaturized to one twelfth of its original size. The motorcycle has been in traced to Mr. James Parada, who had been last seen two nights prior and could, who could not be located. It is not known how Mr. Parada came into possession of SCP-786, why he apparently chose to ride his motorcycle through it, or what ultimately became of him. SCP-786 has previously caused an incident with data expunged, cockroaches that must not be repeated. SCP-881 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures all instances of SCP-881 are stored in Delith Basement of Site-35. Delith Basement's air and water filters must be checked and cleaned weekly, as well as after any research instruction or insertion. 
SCP-881 instances grow their own food, provided the artificial sunlight is continually functioning. Description. SCP-881 is composed of 9,891 instances, each representing part of the former human, animal, and plant life of the cities of and which underwent a spatio-physical transformation during the containment and subsequent destruction of SCP D. The instances of SCP-881 have been shrunk to a fraction of their former size. The scale varies from subject to subject, such that the largest human is roughly 15 centimeters tall and the smallest is roughly 2.5 millimeters tall. The physical conditions that allow for SCP-881's continued existence has been detailed by Dr. Forbes in Data Expunged. The Forbes effect allows the SCP-881 instances to breathe regular air, metabolize regular or differently scaled food and water, and otherwise interact with matter in different scales. SCP-881 instances can communicate verbally, though the smallest instances are nearly inaudible to anyone but themselves. Self-aware instances of SCP-881 are numbered individually in order to keep track of social relationships. Since the incident and subsequent isolation, instances of SCP-881 have formed a distinct social structure between themselves. Instances SCP-881-2166 and SCP-881-1144 are currently nominated the leaders and the managers of the populations. Excerpts of Incident Log Interview A81-12 Interview Dr. Dahmer Interviewer Mr. Hexton, you assured me that the sterilization procedures were carried through 100% of the population. Yes, well, sorry. You know it's hard to keep track of what the inters do in public, let alone what they do in private. Note. Inters is the term SCP-881 instances used for those below the 5 millimeter in, or in size. Before I go into length regarding the meaning of 100% Mr. Hexton, let me point out that we have a record of two new instances on the 5 centimeter to 10 centimeter scale. I, I honestly don't know what happened, Chief. I saw the doctor clip one of those women, and then he assured me the other was just the same. If these couples do not report on how they bypass sterilization, we will consider more intrusive means, Mr. Hexton. Do not think that we won't. Hey, Chief, these are American citizens. They're all stressed, and they want to know what you guys are doing to get us to regular size. A schedule or whatever you scientists use, you know? You are not citizens any longer, and you will know when we deem it proper. Now, if I hear of one more child, we're cutting off all entertainment feeds. With all due respect, Chief, I think that just make things worse. Memorandum? 881-C-331 Forbes, is this tone really necessary, Dahmer? These people are all traumatized enough as it is. Dahmer, SCP are not people, Forbes. Did you skip basic personnel instruction? Forbes, heavens, half of them think they're still going to home someday. Now that's inhuman. Request 881-EDA-55 continuity of research on the reversal of Forbes effect. Status. Rejected by 05-7. Incident 881-Keter 6. In the past month, two researchers, Dr. Beer and Dr. Turner, as well as 6D class staff redacted, which previously have been in contact with SCP-881 have reported to medical with cases of ulcers and internal bleeding in the lungs, inner ear, and other cavities that could be exposed to the air of Dallas basement. Security changes post-incident 881-Keter 6. Ingesting or inhaling matter affected by the Forbes effect may cause cellular damage to living beings. 
SCP-881 matter reassigned to biosafety level 3. Interview 881-20. Interviewer Dr. Dahmer. We have not managed to replicate the source of the contamination from SCP-881 yet. The filters show no foreign matter, yet we've lost two more D-classes. Until we solve this puzzle, you're in lockdown. You know, we could help you with that. We have some very clever people down here. You are not researchers, 881-2166. You are test subjects. Actually, I misspeak. You are research material. Ah, uh, but I did just get word of something you scientists couldn't figure out out. The unexplained pregnancies. Yes. So, it turns out the surgeon's been training Inchmen as helpers, and he's been sewing the women back up as a kind of underground resistance? No need for catheters, right? When a guy can just crawl up there and you will deliver this man's designation immediately. Next week we're initiating radiotherapic sterilization of your entire population. What? That, that's dangerous. You can't do that to us. Be happy we don't throw the whole lot of you into the incinerator. We've been tolerating more than our share of inconveniences in respect that you were humans once. But this is enough. It is time for you to act your size. Very well, Chief, sir. We'll get ready. Incident 881-Keter8. Data expunged. Log 881-Keter8-32. Dahmer. Fuck, can't bypass the lockdown. Can anyone hear me? Dahmer. Damn ants are hiding under our nose hairs this whole time. Think you're fucking clever now. Couldn't find contaminants in the air if the contaminant can see it coming and hide. I'm bleeding off every pore. Call the O5s. Nuke this fucking place. What's in my eye? <laughs> Security changes. Post Incident 881-Keter8. All air, food, and water in Site 35 is to be decontaminated at the 5 nines biological level and cycled. That's the nanoscopic level. Surviving affected personnel are to be screened for cellular damage and remain quarantined pending full decontamination. SCP-881 matter is reassigned to biosafety level 4 and is barred for research until containment procedures are revised. Minimal size of SCP-8 instances are to be revised pending examination of captured instances of SCP-881-9892 through SCP-881-34416. SCP-1056. Resize it. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-1056 is to be kept in a 50 by 50 by 50 centimeter, 10 digit combination safe with biometric confirmation when not being used for testing. Only personnel involved in SCP-1056 research and testing may have access to the object. All tests require prior authorization by the site director or strike through and by research staff at level 3 clearance or higher. Tests on living subjects must be conducted in a secure testing facility, level 2 containment guidelines to prevent modified subjects from escaping. All objects altered by SCP-1056 must be kept in Class E ablative storage for 48 hours after transformation. The creation of any object or organism over 200 kilograms must be approved by the site director. Description SCP-1056 superficially resembles a burnished chrome kitchen timer with numbers ranging from 0.25 to 4.00 and an activation button on the right hand side. A 1 by 1.25 meter a wire mesh platform is connected to the device by a 3 meter insulated molybdenum carbide, carbide wire coated with molybdenum disulfide and an unidentified organometallic complex. The mesh is capable of folding into a 27 by 35 centimeter square. When the device is set to a number, 
and the side button is pushed, any objects in direct contact with the wire mesh platform will scale up or down in size by a factor corresponding to the number setting. The device was recovered by SCP personnel following reports of unusual behavior among students at Ferry High School in Ferry, Pennsylvania, United States. School officials began investigation when teachers reported that a number of students were behaving unusually. Specifically, the students were play displayed significantly impaired language skills, abnormally poor attention span, long-term memory, and impulse control. Medical examination of the students revealed the presence of numerous vascular and nervous system abnormalities. Foundation personnel recovered the device at the home of one of the students who had, presumably, been using it for recreational purposes. The only indicator of the manufacturer or the distribution of the device is a 4 by one centimeter imprint on the bottom of the device reading, The Factory. All electronic components are of generic make. The manner in which objects are resized appears to follow a set of rules that varies depending upon the complexity and the function of the object. Simple inanimate objects such as minerals, metals, and plastics scale up or down to precisely, to four significant figures, the scale indicated without any regard to molecular or microscopic scale. For instance, a 5.0 centimeter stainless steel cube on the 3 setting scaled up to 15.01 centimeter cube that was indistinguishable in molecular composition from the original cube but that differed on the microstructural level. Average grain size on the two cubes was identical and in individual grains of the small cube did not scale up to the large cube. SCP-1056 appears to scale complex device and biological organisms with some attempt to maintain the functional properties of the object or organism. For instance, the microprocessors of electronic devices are often modified if the altered scale would result in non-functional transistor gates, insufficient power, or excessive heat buildup. Devices that have been scaled down often have a reduced number of transistors and may demonstrate floating point errors. While all but the most complex mechanical objects scale relatively well. Electronics are often rendered non-functional when scale below 0.5 and above 3.0 of their original scale. Living organisms that have been resized by SCP-1056 retain their basic anatomical structure but often experience significant reorganization of the circulatory, pulmonary, and especially nervous system. Cell size and composition remains identical to that seen in the original organism, but the number of cells increases or decreases proportionally to the change in volume. The only exception to this observation is the nervous system, where the average neuron may increase or decrease up to 25% in linear size, thus potentially becoming slightly under half or over twice the original volume, with negligible effects on function. Interestingly, SCP-1056 appears to split the difference with single-celled organisms, slightly altering the average cell size but also altering the overall cell population. Humans can be resized by SCP-1056 as low as 0.5 and as high as 1.75 with minimal change in function. Shrinking humans often results in increased gyroencephaly, the folding of the cerebral cortex, a reduction in average neuron volume, and a decrease in white matter. This appears to preserve cognitive function down to 0.5. Attempts to scale humans b below 0.5 results in a substantial decrease in cognitive function, language comprehension, and short and long-term memory indicating that this is the minimal size required for human-like intelligence in a mammalian brain. Humans scaled above 1.25 demonstrate slowed reaction speeds, a reported increase in creativity, and substantial improvements to long-term memory. Scaling beyond 1.5 greatly increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, aneurysm, and renal failure. 
The scaling of any organism beyond 3.0 is highly discouraged. The mechanism by which SCP-1056 institutes these changes is currently unknown. High-speed video photography of transformations up to 20,000 frames per second indicate that the transformation is nearly instantaneous, as there is no apparent transition between forms. Interestingly, there are no apparent effects of atmospheric displacement, even when the volume created or destroyed is very large. In a minority, roughly 8% of cases, an object altered by the device experiences a material instability and begins to undergo atomic decay within 36 hours of alteration. Living organisms and other objects with relatively low metal content have a considerably lower, roughly 3% chance, of undergoing decay. This process produces significant heat and energy, approximately 150 gigajoules per kilogram about six orders of magnitude less than typical matter-antimatter decay, but sufficiently high to render frequent or high-mass transformations inadvisable. Experiment Log, SCP-1056 Experiment 1 Object, TI-30XA, Scientific Calcular, Eater Setting, 0 0.75 and 1.33 Results Functional 0 0.75 scale calculator. The calculator was successfully returned to a 1.0 scale using the 1.33 setting. Repeated transformations between the two settings does not appear to alter the basic function, appearance, or internal composition of the calculator. Experiment 2. TI-30XA scientific calculator. Setting 0 0.25 and then 4.0. Result. A non-functional 0.25 scale calculator. The power button of the calculator turns it on, but it is incapable of performing accurate calculations. Most calculations result in either incorrect results or an ERR signal. Returning of the calculator to normal scale using the 4.0 setting did not return function to the device. Internal analysis indi indicates loss of fine details including transistor number and LCD resolution in the device. Experiment 3. Object, 1 bar of 22 karat gold bullion. Setting, 4.0. Result, 64 kilogram bar of 21 karat gold bullion with minor molybdenum impurities. Experiment 4. 35 1 ounce 28.35 silver eagle bullion coins. Setting 2.0. Results 99 bullion coins weighing 80.18 grams apiece. The increase in total mass seems to be evenly split between increasing the average size of the coins and increasing the total number of coins. 40.25 hours after the transformation, the coins began to emit electromagnetic radiation, eventually emitting high levels of heat and ionizing radiation. The mass of silver was stored in the high explosives test chamber at Site 40 until the silver had completely dispersed 20 hours later. This resulted in extensive damage to the test chamber and the treatment of four researchers for radiation poisoning. Researchers notes, if we can identify the objects that will do this prior to the decay, or reliably induced decay in a class of objects, then items altered by this SCB could be used for power or even weaponized. But there does not appear to be any underlying constant to what items are susceptible to or what SCP-1056 process initiates this decay. Dr. Bimston. Experiment 5. Human Subject. D3202. 52-year-old male, 175 centimeters tall, and weighing 90.3 kilograms. Result, after setting of 2.0, the subject scaled up approximately twofold to 34 centimeters tall and weighing 719.6 kilograms. Mental and physiological functions appear normal. Reaction times are slightly lower than normal and required caloric intake is only 50% of what would be expected given the nearly eightfold increase in mass. 
Subject performs extremely well on long-term memory tests, perhaps owing to the increased brain mass. Resting heart rate is 45 beats per minute and systolic pressure is 165 millimeters Hg versus 132 before the transformation. Six days after the transformation, the subject experienced vascular irregularities leading to moderate swelling in the distal limbs, followed by intermittent bouts of confusion, spotted vision, blurred vision, and tinnitus. Subject died from respiratory arrest caused by a massive brainstem aneurysm 22 days after the transformation. Researchers notes. The subject's sy symptoms suggest a rapid onset of complications consistent with cases of extreme acromegaly, gigantism. Our projections indicate that most humans would tolerate scales of up to 1.33 or slightly above relatively well. Dr. Kearns. Experiment 6. Object, human subject, D3315, 36-year-old female. 163 centimeters tall and weighing 55 kilograms. Setting 50.5. Result. The subject scaled down to approximately twofold to 81 centimeters tall and weighing 7 kilograms. Mental and physiological functions appear normal. There are no significant differences in tests of general intelligence, short and long term memory and spatial reasoning administered before and after the transformation. MRI scans indicate increased folding in the cerebral cortex and an overall decrease in white matter. Resting heart rate is 98 beats per minute and systolic pressure is 88 millimeters Hg versus 115 before the transformation. The object's cardiovascular system was slightly simplified in a manner similar to those seen in smaller primates. 28 days after the transformation, no obvious health or behavioral anomalies were observed, and subject was returned to her original size. Um, experiment SCP-10567, or test 7. Object, human subject D3315 from experiment in 6. 36-year-old female, 81 centimeters tall, and weighing 7.1 kilograms. Setting, 2. Subject scaled back up to original size of 163 centimeters tall with a weight of 55.7 kilograms. Mental and physiological functions appear normal. Cognitive tests indicate a slight but significant in improvement in short and long term memory and a slight decrease in reaction time. It is hypothesized that these cognitive irregularities could compound or change with repeated use of the device. The cardiovascular system appears modified from the shrunken version to support the larger body, but it is not identical to the original vascular pattern, indicating that the device improvises solutions of physiological problems anew with each transformation, rather than reverting to old forms. Experiment 8. Object. Bacterial culture of species E. coli in LB medium on a 13 centimeter petri dish. Setting 4.0. Result. The petri dish scaled up to 52 centimeters and the bacterial colonies increased in volume roughly 64 fold while maintaining their original morphology. Microscopic analysis of the colonies reveals that the average size of the bacteria had increased to a factor of 2.2 to 7 microns in length, while the remaining increase in mass is owed to an increased number of bacterial cells. Samples cultured from these colonies maintained an increased size, generally stabilizing at 6 microns in length after 20 replication cycles. PCR analysis reveals several point mutations in the bacterial genome, such as the RODE-Z gene, leading to the bacterium's generally increased size. Researchers notes. Genetic tests indicate that SCP-1056 restructures organisms on both a physiological and genetic level. This represents a degree of abstract sophistication and consistent with simple digital mechanical workings observed within the device. Dr. Kearns. Experiment 9. Object tested is SCP-1056. Setting 2.0. The result, data expunged. Site Director's Notes. 
From now on, all experiments on this device must be improved by the senior investigator and then submitted to me. The responsible parties have been officially disciplined and removed from this project. We're lucky that the effects weren't much, much worse. What would have happened if the entire universe had, du had doubled in size? Director, I'm Snitlock. Director, Rohanas, yeah, scale. SCP-756, the miniature solar system. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-756 is 10 meter by 10 meter cell is to be remain accessible only by airlock. Personnel entering must wear EVA spacesuits with an MMU if necessary and ensure that they do not move too close to any of the planetoids in orbit. No lights are to be shown on or towards the planetoids, and anything that might be loosely described as a heat source must be kept as far from them as possible. Developments on the surface of each planet are to be examined twice daily by a probe equipped with an electron microscope and a data expunged. The recorded footage will have to be played in slow motion in order to make even the slightest bit of sense. In the event that Planet 4's inhabitants attempt to build another satellite weapon, see Incident Report 756-XA, personnel assigned to remove it must remain aware that although missiles fired from 4's surface cannot penetrate standard issue spacesuits, helmets, or visors, Weapon platforms will almost certainly fire more quickly than the average human being can move. Description SCP-756 is a miniature solar system consisting of a single yellow sun and six orbiting planets, each with various moons and satellites. This system is to be restricted to the confines of a single large cell, originally intended for SCP-756. The cell itself is now devoid of gravity and atmosphere a state believed to be brought about by SCP-756's birth. The system's sun is approximately 68 to 70 centimeters in circumference and is believed to be in the middle stages of its existence based on comparisons with archived footage. The planets orbiting it range in circumference from less than 7 centimeters to 28 centimeters. SCP-756 was first discovered on the body of researcher after he unexpectedly collapsed during a minor cell inspection on For several hours beforehand, Mr. Nidrob had been complaining of numerous painful boils on his back. Following his loss of consciousness, a cursory examination showed that these boils were actually minute fragments of rock protruding from his flesh. However, one boil positioned on the back of Mr. Nidrob's neck appeared to be emitting intense heat, likely the reason for his collapse. According to the instruments situated within the cell, the temperature of his boil climbed from 70 degrees centigrade to above 550 degrees centigrade. By then, all witnesses had fled the cell and sealed the airlock behind him, leaving Mr. Nidrob's incendiary death to be recorded by the security camera. When it was ascertained that the heat emerging from the neck boil had stabilized and was not projecting further than 2 meters, personnel returned to the cell and found that the interior was now little more than a vacuum contained by reinforced concrete. The neck boil had become a new star, while the small rocky protrusions had begun to form simple planets. Since then, SCP-756 has remained under observation, with particular emphasis on the evolution of life in the system. However, it has been observed that both the astronomical bodies and any life forms that may evolve upon them experience time at an accelerated rate. Within a year of SCP-7056's formation, the volcanic surfaces of several planets had given way to oceans, a process that would normally take millions of years. Some years later, researchers observed Planet 3, noted the formation and collapse of an empire over the course of 10 hours estimated to measure at least a century in SCP-756's time span.
The planets themselves, based on the latest survey, are Planet 1, volcanic and far too close to, to the sun to support life. Planet 2, generally mountainous terrain with a large population of apparent non-sapient creatures. Planet 3, mostly ocean dotted with islands of varying biome, presently inhabited by sapient species of nomadic reptilians with a religion based on ocean tides and the unexpected sight of Dr. Hunt's helmeted face in the night sky. Planet 4, primarily composed of data expunged, broken only by what appears to be missile silos and military installations, many of them believed to be covering underground cities. Planet 5, heavily populated with many large settlements built around wildly varying terrains. Unlike Planet 4, the inhabitants have not achieved space travel and, as a result, are currently at peace. Planet 6, equally hospitable until the events of See Incident Report SCP-756-A and has since reverted to uninhabited wastelands. Addendum. Any personnel caught placing glow-in-the-dark stars on the walls of the cell will be reassigned to paperwork. Item number SCP-4780 Object Class Apollyon Special Containment Procedures Not Apollyon. Needed to get attention. Name Thomas Berter. Am Level 4 Researcher. Writing 478 Doc about Shrink Ray. That power surge. Ray hit Shrink Me. It has reverse can unshrink, hurry, not joke, look me up, am in advanced research complex. Room 401, phone dead, am stuck on desk, typed in SCP form. Jumped on keys all night, hurry, rats in building, hungry rats, shrinking, still hard to press, keys will be in 401 on desk. Ray still powered. Point to desk. Flip lever to unshrink. Press fire. Hurry one. Description. Uploading. Error. Description blank. Cannot submit to database. 